Hey guys and welcome back to another video of ECK Sports and today I am going to be giving my thoughts on the latest MLW series Predators vs Diamondbacks. A couple things, first of all, as the season goes on there will be less and less takeaways because then there's more things that like we really know um, about each player and team, um, but there will still be things to talk about I promise you. And also I know this is coming out a day late, that was because I was working on the all new Perfect Game podcast. I'm doing it with Connor the Covers fan, so I was working on that. You can listen to it on both Spotify and YouTube. That will be in the description. And without further ado, let's get into all the games. So in game one, Jimmy North threw a no-hitter. The Diamondbacks won 2-0. Game two, Stephen McGlade threw a no-hitter, and the Preds won 4-0. And then in game three, uh, the first game without a no-hitter, as the Diamondbacks beat the Predators 2-0 once again. So the Diamondbacks take the series 2-1. So now, get into my thoughts and take Away. My first thought and takeaway is that Stephen McLeod is a top three number two arm. I mean, he threw a no hitter against, in my opinion, the second best offense in the league. Uh, yeah, he gave up like five walks or something, and you know there were some lucky plays in there. But he struck out like six guys. You know, five walks. It's like you know it's a decent amount, but you know it's not that bad. So I really like where Stephen McLeod is right now. And then in terms of him being a top three number two arm, I mean, you take him over Barron. I mean, you take him over. Allen, he's definitely looked better than both of them. Definitely looked better than Jorgi, Liam, and Caden. So that leaves him in the top three. He's not better than Heath, obviously, which we'll get to that in a second. But it's really between him and Sailor for two and three. Sailor obviously has pitched more. I, pit I think he has like three more innings pitched. Obviously, because McLeod did not pitch in the Magic series. Sailor has pitched in every series he's played in, which is three. And, you know, he's the second arm, so he only pitches once. So I would still say McLeod's third. Uh, to Sailor. Jonah Heath, man, he was pretty surprising today. He was very good against the Eagles, too. He is the best number two arm in MLW. I think most of us knew that. He had a bit of a rough outing against the Gators. He's really only had one bad inning of pitching this year. He has been locked down. If you take away one inning, he has a zero ERA because he gave up five runs to the Gators. But, I mean, he was locked down. He, I mean, there were two number two arms that beat Aces today. McLeod beat Norp and Heath be crashed. I mean, that's that's pretty crazy if you think about it. Two number two arms beating probably the two best pitchers in MLW. That is crazy. But also, those two number two arms are like the best two number two arms in the league. So, two awesome teams. So yeah, Heath definitely been the best number two arm. He has like a 1.7 ERA. That's, I believe, fourth in the league of guys who have actually like pitched like five plus innings. So definitely good for the D-backs there. And then you got Norp. He should win MVP, Silver Slugger, and Gold Glove. I know that's a lot of a it's gonna be a long one, but let's start with Gold Glove. I mean, the dude can get to anything. Like, if, let's say there's a ground ball hit to Texas, and Jimmy Norp was standing in California, Jimmy Norp could run all the way to Texas in time to make the play and peg somebody. Like, that's just how crazy he is. I mean, his reflexes are crazy. Any ball that is in the stratosphere of him, I he can make the play on. I mean, his play on Russell was insane. Both plays on Russell, actually, because there was a fielder's choice on Russell, and that crazy peg. I mean, it's not just this series. I mean, against the Eagles, he had some crazy plays. Against the Gators, he had some crazy plays. I mean, it's just crazy what Norp is doing. This is the best fielding season of all time. I am not afraid to say that. Hitting-wise, I mean, he really should be the Silver Slugger. I got a Nick Saylor shirt on. I would vote Nick Saylor because I'm biased. I really like Nick Saylor. I'm a, I'm a Preds fan, but, you know, I, I really like Nick Saylor. So I'd vote Nick Saylor, but Norp should really win. He has had a slightly better hitting season season than Sailor, but his really only competition is Sailor, so it's really between the two best Livonia hitters, and we'll see who, who takes it home. And then, uh, MVP, I mean, he's been, like, the second best ace this year, just pitcher in general. He's been, he, he's been, a, I mean, this is the thing with North. He's been the best fielder, top two hitter, top two pitcher, maybe top three pitcher. You could say maybe top two, maybe top three. He should be the MVP. He is the best all-around player in the league, and he is the Shohei Otani of MLW. You gotta love Jimmy North. If he is not for, if he is not your pick for at least two of those awards right now, I don't know what to tell you. Alright, Warda has bounced back. This is so great as a Preds fan. He is hitting 290 right now with five homers and 13 RBIs. He has came back this year. Last year, he had like 10 RBIs, a 182 average, and three home runs. Even in 2019, he had a 220 average and four homers. Now, the average could drop, but I mean, Warda can literally hit anybody. He's hit Chadwick, 
quick. He hit Bonham. He hit. He got like a hit or two off Heath. He was like the only predator to do that. I think he he was the only predator's hit in that game three. And he could hit Norp obviously. I mean he got three hits off him. So Warder can hit anybody. He is awesome. He has bounced back from a really bad 2020 and a not so great 2019 and a you know an underwhelming eight 2018. You know 2018 was a really good year, but like compared to everybody else in the league and what his standards were, it was a down year. So Ward has came back and definitely deserved the All Star selection. All right, now we got a couple of team takeaways. You got the Diamondbacks. They can beat anyone, and they for sure are the best team. I mean, there's nobody even close. They beat the second best team. No, I, I would say the Preds are the third best team. I like the Wildcats slightly more, just in general as a team. So I mean, they they beat you know they basically beat their best competition because they don't play the Wildcats this year in the regular season. So I mean, the Diamondbacks are really good. The Diamondbacks have the best pitching unit. They have the second best ace and the and the best number two arm hitting. They have they're the second best the Wildcats. I know I kind of sound like a Wildcat fan right now, but I, I am not. I am a Pred fan. And then you have fielding, which they are obviously the best fielding unit in the league. So they got it all down and nobody is beating the Diamondbacks until playoff time. I don't even know. Nobody is beating the Diamondbacks unless it is the World Series if they face the Preds or the Wildcats. Because, I mean, I could easily see them sweeping their next two series. They play the Mallards and the Magic. Those are like the worst two teams in the league right now. Well, the bottom three, two of the bottom three, because I would say you probably have to put the Gators in that in that bottom three. But I mean, this team is looking hot. I mean, how do you beat them? Like there's, they do not have a weak spot other than Michael Shima, which he has struggled. But I mean, you don't have to play Michael Shima. So I mean, that Wilson Heath Nork trio is just insane. Two pitchers, three hitters, two, three fielders. I mean, they got it all. I mean, everybody, uh, even Michael Shima is a great fielder too. And you have the Preds can stick with anybody. I don't know if you guys, if you guys realize this, but the point differential between the Preds and the Diamondbacks this series was zero. Preds scored four runs and the Diamondbacks scored four runs. So this showed they can, and yeah, they played the Magic and the Mallets who were like, ah, eh, those aren't the two best teams. They show they can stay with the best team in MLW. And I mean, they, you know, they put up a fight in one and, and three, but they weren't able to score runs. And then in game two, what they were able to do to Norp was very good. When you got, I mean, I would say they're probably the third best hitting unit right now, maybe fourth. Because if you look at team stats, they're third in most categories, fourth in some. So I, I, I'd i still say third, just like overall in MLW. And then pitching, they're probably second, maybe third. I would say second. And then fielding, I mean, they're they're kind of middle of the pack, you know. Crack's solid fielder, Russell. He's He has some trouble with ground balls, but he's okay. Warda and McLeod are solid fielders too. So they're kind of middle of the pack at fielding. Not, not as bad as the Mallards, but not as good as the D-backs. So that leads to the question, is this the World Series matchup we are going to see? I think yes. Now, I actually think the Wildcats are going to end up with a better record, but I think that the Preds will get the two seed and end up winning. It's going to be really tough between the Cats and the Preds. You'll see with my midseason prediction video. Maybe that opinion will change because I haven't exactly gone through the series yet, but just thinking about it, I think the Wildcats will have a better record, but we'll see. Um, I mean, this if this happens, obviously I'm not going to give my prediction yet because I don't want to spoil my MLW mid-season prediction video which will be coming up soon. And that's going to do it for this video and I just want to say uh, a lot of you guys were confused about bomb of the day. So bomb of the day is the furthest home run, not the best home run. So I know someone was commenting Warda's 100th should have been uh, bomb of the day. Well, yeah, that's because you know, it was it was the best but it also wasn't like the furthest which is what I try to pick which I know is weird but I try to pick like the what I think is the furthest home run. I just think it's cool. And at the end of the year, I'm going to be kind of like ranking them based on how far they were hit. So we'll see which one ends up with the furthest home run. Right now, I can tell you it's leaning towards one of Norps. And obviously with Web Gem of the Day, that is the best play of the day. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure you guys hit that like and that subscribe button. And let's roll Nuke Web Gem of the Day. See you guys next time. Peace. Swing shot back to Norp. Can't handle it. Oh, he got him at first. What a play from Norp. Swing shot, Ben Wilson, home run. Solo shot in the first, one nothing D-backs.